Hi church family, you're watching Izzy in Christ. I wanted to make this video because, um, well, first off, I wanna say that I appreciate my Christian friends that are loving and kind and gentle and sweet. These are all things that we're supposed to be. But is it wrong to be assertive? In my honest opinion, no, I don't think so. And I do think that the Bible supports that. Uh, I wanted to share from scripture actually what it is to be assertive, but in a way that is godly. Um, so I understand that as Christians, we're supposed to love our neighbor, but loving our neighbor doesn't mean that we just let people walk all over us or take advantage of us. We don't let people do that. Um, so I wanted to share from Proverbs chapter four, verse 23, uh, verse 23, um, it says, keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Some translations say, say to guard your heart. A lot of people tend to use this verse to mean that, oh, you know, you need to guard your heart from, you know, false romantic relationships. And that is true. But that can also mean keeping away from bad company. If you read the verses before that, it actually talks about wicked men and wicked people. And it's true, they will taint you, but that's not limited to people taking advantage of you. And that can change you. Um, keep in mind what uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33 says about bad communications being spoiled by bad company. And that can happen as well. It has happened to me in the past. I've been around people that were bad influences and um, the Lord had to help me see that that was not good. And he convicted my heart about keeping company like that. And so um, that's very important to keep in mind, guarding your heart. Uh, it's important to set boundaries with people. Um, people feel that this is a bit touchy. Uh, and, and I feel like this, this, uh, these points that I'm about to share, they're gonna be a little touchy for some people. Um, but I think, anyway, just hear me out and, and maybe read the scriptures that I'm about to share. I do think it is important to set boundaries with everyone, not just friends, not just family, not just coworkers or your managers even. The truth is we're all human beings. We're all made in the image of God and we all deserve equal amounts of respect. Um, so, and I'm not by any means saying that you got to be rude to people, but there is a difference between being rude and being firm. So you've got to let people know, not in a standoffish way, but let them know. I mean, at first gently, but then after you got to be a little more firm and let them know this is not acceptable to me. I am not going to tolerate this. Um, so we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 22, I think it was. Yeah, chapter 22, verse 10. Um, verse 10, bear with me as I find it. It says, cast out the scorner and contention shall go out. Yea, strife and reproach shall cease. So keep that in mind. He's telling you to, to kick out the person that's causing, you know, problems. That is, you know, just being nasty. These are people who are negative, who are always causing trouble, that are just causing all kinds of drama and are upsetting people all the time. You don't need that kind of negativity in your life. And you have the right to tell people, hey, I don't need this and I don't want you to be here. And I don't want you in my life, quite frankly. I've had to do that recently, which was not the easiest thing to do, but I needed to do it. Um, and then, you know, I wanted to, cause I know I mentioned managers and, and uh, and coworkers, uh, it more, I'm more so talking about um, managers, bosses. Keep in mind that subservience is not necessarily being a doormat. I think a lot of people have this idea that, oh, well, because I work under this person, they can just get away with abusing me or being rude to me because they're my boss. After all, the Bible tells me that I have to, um, I have to submit to them. But keep in mind that that same scripture because I believe people take it from Ephesians. Keep in mind that Ephesians chapter 6 verse 9 also talks to slave masters. In our day and age we don't have slave masters but it's really talking about like um, you know your, your supervisor, your manager, your boss at work. 
it talks about actually how important it is to, uh, you know, have mutual respect for people. Um, so I wanted to go to Ephesians chapter six, verse nine, and it says, and this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and all judgments. Oh wait, that's number, I'm reading, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm reading Philippians. I meant Ephesians because I'm looking at the wrong page. Um, verse nine, it's here. And ye masters, do the same things unto them, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master is also in heaven. Neither is there respect of persons with him. So keep in mind that, yeah, he sees, you know, your boss, your supervisor, your manager. They're, you know, they're no, there are no favorites of persons in the kingdom of heaven. And they're no different. They're human beings just like you, just like me. And they don't have the right to talk down to you or be abusive. It's not okay. It even sells them there. Don't, don't threaten them. God is watching. God sees everything. And it's also about keeping a level of professionalism in the work. I mean, and keeping in mind, would treat others as you like to be treated. Even the secular world talks about how important that is to them. Yet, anyway, I won't get into that whole discussion. But the point is that, you know, if they have that standard over other people, then they should hold it for themselves as well. And I'm not by any means trying to say that, you know, you should go and berate your boss or your manager or something, but no, there's a way professionally and um, there's a way to do things in a way that is Christ-like and letting them know that this behavior is not tolerated. Get a third party involved if you have to, like an HR person or something, but don't try to handle it all on your own if you know that this person is likely that is, is likely going to, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, is likely going to retaliate. Um, if you have like a union at your job and they can protect you, great. But um, anyway, the point I'm trying to say is try to resolve the issue and try not to allow the person to keep on abusing you because that's not appropriate. Um, so um, I wanted to talk a little bit about boundaries. Um, I wanted to I wanted to um, talk about you know the fact that it's not just people being unfriendly to you, although that that is a big part of it. Is people that are just unkind, that are just rude to you. Um, I wanted to read Proverbs chapter 22, verses 24 to 25. So it says, um, Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. So again, that's going back to what um, Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33 is, right? Um, First Corinthians, I think it was. Um, yeah, First Corinthians uh, 15 verse 33. Uh, that's talking about the fact that, you know, being around this person is not only going to make you bitter, but you're you're also going to pick up their habits. And that has personally happened to me where I've been around people that were just unhealthy for me. And then I started treating others in a not so nice way. And I noticed that as I spent more time away from them, I, that slowly started to change. And I, of course, as, as well as God started to work on my heart. Um, so it is very important to defend boundaries. Like it, you, it's, it's up to us to tell people how we accept, uh, like what kind of treatment we accept from others. Like we are not in a place that just because we have to love each other that, that we accept other people's abuse. It, it's not okay to accept abuse. Um, so other ways that people can be abusive is, you know, people who don't pay you back. You know, you, you give them money or anything and you know in good faith you trusted them that they will they will pay you back or that they will you know they will help you in some way in the future and then they don't you know like that that's not okay people who you know abuse your time people who call you all hours of the day or show up at your house without making an appointment that's just rude <laughs> it's rude and then you know people who come over and then they just eat your food or they you know use your things without permission that's also very rude. It's not something we should be tolerating from anyone. And we should let people know where we stand or what our boundaries are and what you can you consider appropriate. And if anybody, you know, retaliates or they get angry at you or they, you know, somehow use it against you, okay, let them say whatever they want, but 
you're not being a bad friend or you're not being a bad um, uh, sibling or, or father or mother or, uh, you know, you, you name the, the title, you know, you're not horrible, a horrible person because you're defending your boundaries. Um, and also keep in mind, because another one that I really struggle with is, you know, forgiveness. Yes, and, and we all already know that forgiveness is, is very important in our faith. But I will say this, that a lot of, sadly, not just Christians, people um, tend to confuse forgiveness with reconciliation. They don't actually mean the same thing. Um, so with forgiveness, all that means is you let go of bitterness and resentment with other people because it's not worth holding on to that bitterness and resentment. And it also says in scripture that if we don't forgive others, then God will not forgive us. Um, I have my, I have objections about that. I'm a little confused about that, to be honest, but it's something I will explore and I will talk about in another video. But anyway, I just wanted to explain the difference. So with forgiveness, it means letting go of bitterness and resentment. In reconciliation, it means repairing, re repairing the, I'm sorry for my noisy neighbor's dog. Um, <laughs> um, it means repair of the relationship um, and forgiveness and reconciliation don't have to happen together uh, necessarily. Keep in mind that if you're gonna reconcile a relationship with someone, then you're trusting them to come back into your life. And an abusive person is not someone you should welcome back into your life. There are just some people that are like that. Sadly, there are just some people who don't see themselves, who are not going to change, who are consistently going to just keep looking for problems and drama, and you don't need that in your life. I had to make the decision many years ago that I don't need friends like that. I don't need people in my life that are just going to cause me unnecessary, unwanted stress. And that's all it's going to do. And it will corrupt your good morals. It made me very angry. And I was just very, you know, and sometimes I took that out on other people and that wasn't fair because yeah. they had nothing to do with the issue. So um, I want to leave you with these, um, these points. And I, I pray that you consider everything I'm saying. I pray this video blessed you. And um, I'll see you all in the next one. Stay blessed, everyone. Stay prayed up. I'll see you. Bye.